I'm in the process of setting up labs for students to do in PowerPoint. Um, we do this because um, some students don't have printers at home. Most students don't have scanners, uh, at least not good enough scanners that will enable us to measure their answers and see if they've done the work precisely. Um, so uh, we've adopted the strategy of using PowerPoint as a drafting program. Now, PowerPoint's not an ideal drafting program. Um, it's not really designed for drafting, um, but it has the advantage that our students have easy access to PowerPoint. Um, so we can make it work, but we have to set up the questions very carefully in PowerPoint um, to avoid certain problems that PowerPoint has, particularly uh, altering the scales of graphical objects that are added to PowerPoint presentations. So I'm going to share my screen and you'll see on the screen I have already um, several of the assets that I'm going to use in building a PowerPoint lab exercise. Um, some of them I created in Adobe Illustrator, which I have, but the students don't have access to, and is a much better drafting program. Um, and some of them are images that I have on my hard drive. Uh, so let's uh, bring a new PowerPoint presentation into the picture here. And uh, there are some first things that we need to do. Uh, one big problem with PowerPoint is that it scales content whenever you change the size of your paper. Uh, so if, for example, I grab my ruler here, uh, let's just copy the ruler into the clipboard and now we'll paste it into the PowerPoint slide. Um, it's exactly 25 centimeters long, uh, but when we paste it into the PowerPoint slide, uh, well, first let's try it like this. And we just get a string of letters. That's because our clipboard contains text information and PowerPoint assumes that we only want the text information. So let's get rid of that. Um, and instead, we're going to go paste special and we're going to choose a PDF. Uh, so now we've got our ruler looking the way it should be, but you see it exactly spans the page. And although it's supposed to be 25 centimeters long, I'm pretty sure it's not because PowerPoint has scaled it to fit the page. Um, so uh, it's only 19 centimeters long because that's the height of the piece of paper that PowerPoint thinks I'm working on. So you might think uh, that you could go into the design tab where there's a slide size and change the size of the slide. So let's do that. We go page setup. Uh, let's say we want to use letter size, paper, uh, and portrait orientation and we click on OK and a PowerPoint now asks me this impossible question. I want it to leave my content the same size. Uh, it wants to know whether to scale it up or down to fit the new slide um, and neither of those is what I want it to do. Um, so uh, let's pick scale up. Now we've changed our piece of paper. Uh, the ruler is off the side of the piece of paper, and it's actually probably almost the right length. Um, the only thing is that I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not exactly the right length because uh, let's go home again and see. Um, so let's grab that rectangle again. I'm going to draw that from one end of the ruler to the other. And you see that, yeah, that's 25.4 centimeters long. So it's a little bit too long. Um, and the reason is because when you choose letter size paper in PowerPoint, it doesn't actually give you eight and a half by 11. It gives you half an inch smaller all the way around. Um, so it actually gives you 10 inches by seven and a half inches. And 25.4 centimeters there is, I happen to know is exactly 10 inches. So it's made my 25 centimeter ruler into a 10 inch ruler. Um, so that's not so good either. So what I recommend is actually that you go into your design tab and you go slide size, page setup, and you make the page uh, the widest that it could possibly need to be. So my favorite is to go 50 centimeters wide and 30 centimeters high. And then I can fit anything that's on, yeah, I don't care about the content because we don't have any much at the moment. So let's just scale it. Um, uh, so now I have a really big sheet of paper. 
Okay, so let's go home and let's insert a new slide, which is going to be for some of our content. So let's make it a blank slide. Um, so now I'm going to go into my uh, reserve of files here, and I've got a 11 inch by 17 inch picture of some deformed crenoid ossicles that I want the students to make measurements from. Uh, I can drag it in and yes, it now fits in the page. It hasn't been scaled by PowerPoint. So it's coming in at the size that I intended. Um, so uh, now if the students start making measurements on this, uh, let's go and get my uh, ruler again. Uh, so we'll copy. Um, and we'll come over here and we'll do a paste special. Um, we'll choose PDF. And now we have our ruler, so we can start to make measurements. Um, and we can maybe draw things on here. Uh, now, one problem that often arises uh, when we start to draw things uh, is that we accidentally end up moving around our template that we're measuring or drawing. Uh, so I can draw some arrows here, for example, pointing to certain uh, crinoids. Um, here we go. Uh, they're coming out very faint, but that doesn't matter for the moment. And then I try to move the arrow. And by accident, I move the rock sample, uh, which is not very helpful. Uh, so let's do an undo to put that back. Um, undo move object, there we go. Uh, so uh, there's a better way to do this. Uh, so the way I recommend doing this is that we uh, copy or we cut rather our picture of uh, our rock. We put it on a clipboard and now uh, we go into the view menu. Now this is in a different place on a Windows machine. So I'll have to leave you to find this. And we go into what's called the slide master. Okay, so we'll look at the master for slides that are blank. And uh, now we can do paste. And there's our um, block full of crinoid ossicles, deformed crinoid ossicles. And uh, we can even change the name of this master, rename it. So I'm just going to rename it to crinoids. And that's the slide master. So any slide that's made from the master called crinoids will have this picture in the back of it. Uh, so now I'm going to exit the slide master by clicking on this close master button here. And now we have the crinoids in our slide, but the student can't accidentally move them around. So I recommend doing this for all objects when uh, you want them to stay in the same place on the page and you want the students to be able to move things around on top of them. Um, so that's the equivalent of locking an object in a real drafting program like Illustrator. And it's the closest thing we have in PowerPoint. Now, sometimes we'll end up with very large numbers of uh, objects in our slide. I'm just going to quickly draw some rectangles here. I use option click to drag them around. A um, couple of tricks while I am moving objects around here. Uh, if you hold down shift, it will force the objects to move orthogonally. Um, all objects have a little rotation marker here. You can rotate them by any number of degrees. If you hold down shift, it will force it to be multiples of 15 degrees. Uh, but a better way to rotate things is actually to go into one of the side panels. Uh, and I can bring it up by right clicking and selecting size and position here. And now I have the option to rotate things by an arbitrary angle. So let's rotate this rectangle by 27.3 degrees. Uh, and there we go, we've rotated it. Uh, it seems to have routed off the number, but I think it does it precisely. It just shows you the nearest degree. Um, so we have a certain amount of precision there. We can also scale things the way we want to scale them, not the way that PowerPoint wants to scale them uh, in here. So we have a whole bunch of objects. Now we may still have problems getting hold of the one we want. Sometimes if we have a whole lot of objects, one on top of each other, it can be quite fiddly in PowerPoint to get hold of the thing you want. Um, so uh, there's another uh, feature 
uh, which you can get to at the bottom of a range, okay? And I think this is the single most valuable thing in recent versions of PowerPoint. This is a thing called the selection pane, and it gives you control over all of the objects that are on your slide. Uh, so if I want the ruler back in front of everything else, I can drag it up to the top. Uh, and I can also make things invisible. Uh, so I can make them invisible by turning them off, which means I can't mess them about. And then when I finish working, I can turn them back on again. So those are some capabilities that are similar to those that you get in a professional drafting program. Um, so this is the workflow that I have found works best in PowerPoint. And I would uh, recommend these steps. Um, first, scale your paper to be larger than anything you're possibly going to want to put in your document. Uh, two, anything that mustn't move around while the student's working on it, like graph axes or pictures, rock samples, goes in the master layer. And you can create as many master layers as you want uh, for different slide formats, which you can name as you wish. Um, and uh, third, bring up that selection pane when things get complicated, uh, because it's a real godsend in managing the objects in your document. Hopefully those comments are some help in setting up uh, former paper exercises so that they can be done on screen by students.